I was actually surprised at how many of you said good morning back, you know. <laughs> so creative mornings, I love the idea of this creative community, people coming together to listen, analyze, think, and talk. And Ben sent me videos and I did a little bit of research about what this is all about. And one of the videos, this guy said, maybe I could go up there and just stand in silence for 20 minutes. And I thought about that because I'm really into minimalism. I was just talking to Michael Powell about minimalism. But then I thought that would suck. You know, you wake up early, <laughs> you come to Copper and Kings and I just stand here in silence. So I won't be doing that. You know, this guy might, but not me. So today I'm basically covering four different talking points. Not enough time to talk about everything I've ever done in life and engage with you the way I want to. So we'll put it into four different categories. And this basically defines who I am, my life, what I do, what I take part in. Education, composition, performance, and curation. My friend Dave Duran said that the word curate and curation is overused nowadays, and I blame myself because I use it all the time. So <laughs> I'm not curating a museum, I'm talking about design, creativity, visually. I brought four props, and it was either this or make some sort of PowerPoint keynote crazy. Ben told me that a lot of people do that to just have some sort of visual aesthetic. And I was thinking, man, you must have had some really unattractive speakers in the past. So, <laughs> no offense, but I'd rather go the prop route. So I brought four props with me. This is Steve Rambo. He's at all of my performances. This is my microphone stand. And he will represent performance. This is a Lego man and he will represent curation. This is a 12 track digital recording studio and this will represent composition. And the hoodie I'm wearing will represent education. So with curation, I would say that these aren't even necessarily props but really significant items that took a part in my life and brought me to where I am today. This guy may be more important than every other item up here. I was very young when I started playing with Legos and don't get me wrong, I loved other toys. I had all sorts of Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and whatnot, but something about molding and changing the toys that I had struck me as different. It kind of reflected the world around me. I grew up in the west end of Louisville, a place where a lot of people feel as if you can't beat the stereotype. You can't make it out unless you die or go to jail. And that's not true. So I grew up with these Legos. I didn't have any siblings for years and years and years. And I just created. I built cities. And I used to always get these Lego magazines. And it had all of these kids from around the world making different things. And I never got in the magazine, you know, I was kind of salty about that. But <laughs> I thought it was so cool that you had kids making their own worlds. And not even just an imaginary world, just trying to take themselves out of a situation that they were in and do something different with these little structures, with these little Lego men. And I think back to like the Ninja Turtles and the Power Rangers, those were cool and all, but you can take their hands off, you can take their legs off, you can take his head off. So that's like completely customized Lego man. His body's like Indiana Jones and then his head looks like a knight or something from like the medieval world. So I always thought that Legos were really important and they go back to the whole idea of just taking yourself out of a world. And between that and going to music, I went through all of these different phases. At one point I saw Fast and the Furious and I wanted to be a race car driver like a streetcar driver, but I didn't know that was illegal, you know? <laughs> and I still kind of don't know that's illegal. I have a lot of speeding tickets. So 
between that, Fast and the Furious, you know, I, I wanted to be an astronaut at one point, I wanted to be an architect, I wanted to be all of these different things, but they always related back to creating, even with the model cars. How can you change the car, you know, change the rims, change the vinyl on the side, or with the architecture, how can this building look, what does it look like next to this building or next to this McDonald's, there's McDonald's everywhere, you know, so you gotta think about that. And I found music. A lot of you know, if you know me, I saw the movie Drumline, and that kind of kicked off this, this enforcement of music is powerful, it impacts a crowd, it impacts an audience. So I saw that movie, and I wanted to be in the Drumline. So I got to middle school, and my band director, Lauren Maxey, I'll never forget it, I was awful to her. <sighs> Wait a minute. I got in middle school, and we started band, and it was nothing like the movie Drumline. You know, we, we were playing hot cross buns, and I was like, what is this? This is whack, you know? So I think that going through that hardship in middle school and high school was really important for me to realize you have to take what you have and change it and mold it, just like when I was playing with the Legos. You have to make the best out of some sort of situation. I don't think that anyone in this room Anyone you ever meet will be the best at what they want to be reading a book or watching some sort of documentary. I think that everything in life is all about experience. You have to go out there and live it. You have to commit this action, so to speak. So I went through band. I did the whole band thing for a while. And it wasn't until I was about to graduate high school that I realized I don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life besides music. Thought about being an astronaut, didn't really work out, I'm still on Earth. So music really saved me and took me to another place. And rewind back to before I even got to high school, that's where the whole composition thing came into play. This is called the Korg D1200 MK2. And you notice 1200, that's where my nickname came from. I purchased this when I was 12 years old. Before I was a teenager, I was trying to produce and engineer music. A very significant item because I didn't have anyone in my life to show me that, to show me the ropes, to teach me. I didn't have a book, a manual, some sort of documentary to watch. And it goes back to the whole idea of action. I had to just sit down and learn on my own. This item came to me when I escaped those childhood desires of wanting to just play and everything being imaginary. So instead of just making this world and imagining it, I had a new world to actually be in. I could actually record, I could actually produce. And I was self-taught and I did that. And I think it's so important and so vital for people to learn something and be self-taught. Just by a show of hands, how many people in the room have taught yourself something? Whether it was to produce, walk, you know, whatever the case may be just something of some sort. That's so important. There's a lot of information you might miss from the people who know what they're doing professionally, but the fact that you can sit down and experience something and learn it on your own is so important. I was in this graduate research class and we watched these videos about some random location and they had computers placed in these villages that didn't even have electricity. They had these boxes and they had computers in them. And these kids would come to these computers every day, couldn't even speak English, could barely walk, but they would come to these computers and over a course of time, they learned how to search the World Wide Web, they learned how to type, they learned how to play games. And that just goes to show you that no matter what age you are, no matter what experience you have, you can be self-taught in any way, shape, or form. So the idea of composition and relating it to the core of D1200 is very important. And it takes a certain amount of passion to even make that leap. I was saving up money from Christmas and my birthdays for like two years before I bought this. It's kind of scary. What do you want for Christmas? What do you want for your birthday? Money. It's like, what are you getting? You're a drug addict? No, I'm not. So <laughs> it was kind of weird like asking that for two years straight and then saving that money up just to purchase this, not really knowing what I was doing at all, but doing it anyway. Very vital, very important. 
Now, another reason I didn't want to have some sort of visual representation of what I'm talking about is because they all relate to each other. So I'll be jumping around a lot. So if you've seen me perform, it's kind of the same idea, same thing. The composition relates to the performance. And just by a show of hands, how many people have seen me perform? Thank you so much for coming out to the shows. Uh, a lot of you haven't, so I guess I'll perform like a little snippet or something. This song is called Resurrection, and this is just the second verse of it, so I'll just perform a little bit of it. I show up to events by myself. Never mind, I brought Benjamin. Him and Grant have plenty twins. I resurrect them dead presidents. I resurrect Tholadrian, and I resurrect Makiba Lee. Both lives lost in the streets, so I resurrect them when I feel the beat. I resurrect my Uncle Fred, and I resurrect Michael Newby. Uncle died on my birthday. Newbie died before he really knew me. I resurrect the Clay Brooks brothers. Jamal Damar, God bless your mother. I resurrect Aaron Shields too. I can't imagine how your parents suffer. I resurrect Marco, Deshaun, Quan, PJ, Pinky, and my nanny. I miss all my fallen friends and family. I'ma resurrect you at the Grammys. A lot of people say thug now, like I'm really just supposed to be offended. Tupac screamed thug life. I dare you to say he was a menace. He changed the world and you didn't. He deserves a whole book of Guinness. And I am reincarnation walking. If they gifted, I'm the new Christmas. When I die, celebrate my life. Don't wear black, wear all white. Put 1,200 roses in my casket. Have a gold holy grail for my ashes. When I die, don't bury me. Have a concert in the KFC. Young, everybody going dumb. Everybody dancing till their bones go numb. Um, I'm resurrected and so well respected. I can influence what man's elected because I'm well connected and the world's affected. When I teach these lessons, 9,000 blessings. I ain't really playing with you simples. See both sides to the middle. I solved our riddles. They killed Trayvon for some Skittles. They pop black heads like pimples. No rice, just pistols. Every time it's acquittal, they belittle the committal to a fair. Just as if a trap out with a swivel. So our pair did it on these strikes to these fiddles. So you know every tool ain't a piddle. I'm official. So the idea of composition. <laughs> Thank you. So the idea of composition is important and it goes back to the whole idea of being creative. You have to just take something and make it into what it is. So Steve here, he just stands at shows. He doesn't really do anything. He's just a visual aid to me, you know. And he was purchased because I was just in Hobby Lobby with my friend Lauren, like four hours. <laughs> and we were trying to find some, you know, stage dressing, some prop stuff for the show at Headliners I do with Jalen and we couldn't find anything, and I kept walking by these styrofoam heads. And I was like, man, we can't be in the store for four hours and leave and not get anything. So I just bought this head. And, the, and for a while, he just sat in my closet, like in the top. So every time I got some clothes, like, what's up? You know, it's kind of scary. <laughs> and then I just put him on his microphone stand, and now he's here. So Steve has no real purpose other than to remind you of the performance aspect of my life. And I wanted to bring a marimba in here, but a five octave marimba probably couldn't fit on the elevator or get up here. So maybe next time you see me, I'll be able to play a little marimba. But anyway, this is Steve. Everyone say hi, Steve. Hi, hi Steve. Steve. He's shy, so he won't talk back. <laughs> and then the last item is my hoodie. Very significant. If you see Junkyard Hawks, you know, music ensemble, Height Elementary School, that is where I teach. And the Junkyard Hawks is a percussion ensemble, and they're called the Junkyard Hawks because they make instruments out of junk, out of anything. And it goes back to the idea of just taking something that you have, doing something creative with it, making music, making something your own. I didn't come here today to tell you 10 steps to be successful. That's not really me. I didn't come here to tell you how to be the best teacher, how to be the best composer, performer, curator. It doesn't matter. I came here to tell you that you simply have to find something out on your own. You have to experience something on your own. Going through college, especially grad school, there were so many research and learning theories that had all of these different ideas of the way that things should be. There's this guy named Piaget. He thinks that learning should come from individual constructivism. You have to go out in the world and do this and do that. And then um, Vygotsky, he talks about you have to interact with other people. All these different theories. And at the end of the day, they all kind of just work 
together. There is no one right way. There is no one documentary you can watch. There is no one manual or how-to guide to make your life the best it can be besides you just going out and experiencing something on your own. So no matter what you take from this, it's not direction. It's not a focused way of me telling you, you need to do this, you need to do that in order to be the best whatever. Each and every single one of you has your own path in life. Whatever you think that might be. You, know, you might want to be an astronaut like me. And it's still not too late. But you have to figure it out on your own. You have to go out there and play with Legos. You have to go out there and take risks. You have to save up your money and buy a digital recording studio. You have to do anything that you can possibly do in life to figure out what is the best way for you to become what you want to be exactly. When I'm teaching, I try to engage the kids. Everything turns into some sort of game. So I'm gonna try that with you guys. <laughs> so we call this level one in elementary school. It's whispering. So look at the person next to you, and I want you to just start whispering and have like a little conversation with them. Let's go for it. Thank you for listening to me today.